Hi and welcome back to Glassboxed writing automated Java tests. Uh, today we are going to have a look at the CSS selector locator for WebDriver. Uh, we will look at what the CSS selector locator is. We will look at writing CSS selector expressions and we will wrap it up by writing a really basic test using JUnit and WebDriver's CSS selector locator method. So, what is CSS selector? Uh, well, to first understand what the selector uh, locator is, I think we just need to have a really quick understanding of what HTML is uh, versus CSS is. So, HTML is the markup language uh, used to tell a web page what it has. For example, this particular page has links, it has text, uh, it has a table, it has some kind of ordering of the links, etc. But the look and feel of these elements is actually defined using a cascading style sheet, i.e. a CSS. So the aesthetics of the page and the look and feel of the page is defined by a CSS script. So for instance, the CSS script could define various things such as the color of the table, the size and font style of this particular text, the margin of the tables, the size of the tables, uh, the width and height of particular cells in the table, if we navigate to another page, for instance, the contact page, the CSS could also be used to define the style of the tables inside a table. So here, for instance, we have a contact form inside the actual page table, etc. So in order for a CSS to work, these styling is effectively applied to the HTML of the page and what the web driver CSS selector locator does it allows us to pinpoint these CSS attributes and methods used on the HTML page therefore allowing us to grab elements of the page so let's look at an example if I right click and I just view the page source so what I can see here is on the HTML page is that it has various links, um, uh, text, uh, it's got various different uh, tags or nodes that are being used. But more specifically, if I have a look at the very top, I can see that a style sheet has been used. So if I click on that, this now shows me the style sheet. So this style sheet is just really quickly um, applying various decorations and dressing to the page. So for instance, if we have a quick look at one of these, so I will pick one at random, uh, this for instance. So td dot left link, and all it's doing is, is just applying an image to the background of whatever node happens to use that. So if we go back and have a look at the source. So here, is where that particular styling is being used and it is just being used to decorate the background of this particular TD tag. So if we have a look on the actual page now is this lime green color effectively that is being set by the CCS and that is just an example of how CCS code is effectively applied on a HTML page so that it alters the look and feel of a page. And that's effectively a, a really quick uh, explanation of how the look and feel of a web page can be defined using a cascading style sheet uh, such as this. Right, so now that we're armed with this new information and we know a little bit about HTML and we know a little bit about CSS, and we know how 
HTML code uses a CSS script to decorate web pages, we can now use this information to pick out patches of code on the HTML page that is used by the CSS to then use the CSS selector locator in our web driver. So let's go ahead and actually start writing a test. So here is uh, a really basic test that at the moment does nothing and I'm just going to really quickly write uh, a line of code to instantiate our uh, web driver. So this line of code will just uh, create our driver. Uh, this will just navigate to our website and lastly we're just going to um, close the driver just a typo here perfect so before we go forward I just want to explain the four most commonly used CSS uh, selector expressions used to usually grab information from a web page. So let's go ahead and um, do that here. So the first one I'm going to describe is how we use CSS to pick out an ID attribute on a HTML page and then use that in our test. So the first one we're going to do is the ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and just write uh, an empty piece of code which will, will then uh, populate. Right. So in this line, let's see what's happening. So we're saying driver, uh, which is just the instance driver dot find element, and this is what finds us the element. But the by locator we're using now is the CSS selector, and what this does is this CSS selector allows us to directly plug in to any patches of code used on our HTML page, which is being served by the CSS script. So since the first one we're going to look is ID, let's try and find one which has an ID attribute and then we can use that. Right, so let's have a look at our HTML page. Uh, so luckily we've got a couple here. So we'll just use one. Uh, in fact, the one we'll use is the contact link. Now, the way we use ID attributes is really straightforward we just give the hash key followed by the ID name and that's it it's uh, it's really not complicated so what this will do is this will once it navigates to this page it will try to find an ID which is expressed using the hash key with which has a value of contact underscore link and then it will try and click on it and that's pretty much how you find something by attribute of type ID. The next one we're going to look at is by node name or tag name. So let me explain what nodes are really quickly. So nodes are pretty much uh, these things or, or their tag. I mean they're usually referred to as tags uh, but I've seen throughout my uh, employment career that sometimes they're referred to as nodes um, because they res well because they are HTML tags, uh, which is similar to XML tags, which are also referred to as nodes. Um, probably not very important information to know about. It's just that uh, I'm just referring to these as nodes uh, as well as tags. So for simplicity, we will now call them tags. Uh, right. So these are just tags. Uh, so this is a, a HR tag. Uh, this is a, a, a P tag, uh, a TD, and, and so on. So what we can do is, we can actually use the tags as part of an expression for the CSS selector locator. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to copy up to there. And we're going to get rid of this. 
and the tag that we're going to use in this instance and we'll try and find a unique tag that's used only on one instance on the page and I can see a few, I can see the title I can see the paragraph uh, there are a couple of others um, but I'm just going to fish through them so I'm just going to use the paragraph tag and to express that in a CSS select expression it is as simple as putting in the name of the tag, in this case just P and just to confirm we've got the right thing we're just going to do a, a get text on it in fact what we're going to do is we're going to do a system print right so this will just print out uh, the value of this particular tag now the one we're going to take a look at is much much more relevant to CSS and we're going to take a look at the class expression so again I'm just going to really quickly uh, copy this so that we have uh, just a quicker way of using things and what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find uh, a class that we can click on that would uh, allow us to do uh, something further so based on our test if all goes well we would have already clicked on the contact link and we would have gotten the value of the paragraph tag from that page so the first thing we need to do is actually navigate to that page so let's just do that and uh, close these right click open the source of this so this time we are trying to get a class attribute right so if we have a look at the page for this uh, so we've got class used in several places uh, here's one and another uh, here's one as well uh, and in the table okay so we're just going to use any single one uh, to keep the test really simple I'm going to use a simple one so I'm just going to click click on the home link by getting the class value for that particular link which is uh, of value home okay home now to express uh, how we identify uh, a class as a CSS selector expression it is as simple as putting uh, the dot operand in front of the name of the class and that's it so if we just compare here we were just trying to find something by attribute of type ID which is expressed as a hash followed by the value of the ID so in this instance when we look for a class it's the dot followed by value so again we're just gonna click on it perfect and now the last one which is probably one of the most common ones used and that is the attribute expression again just gonna copy now let me explain how we write expressions for an attribute it's actually pretty straightforward the way we do it is this inside here where the expression goes when we try or when we want to try and tell our test to use an attribute of the value we need to provide the information first of all inside uh, square brackets like so and we need to give the name of the attribute so let's just say uh, name um, of attribute equals and then the value of the attribute And that's it. That's that's quite literally how we use an attribute expression inside a CSS selector locator. So if we just copy this in, in here, uh, get rid of that. So now let's go and actually find an attribute we want to click on, and then get its value.
right so let's go and actually find some valid attributes and values for attributes that we can use so if we look at our test the last place we would have been is on the home page because we would have clicked on the home link via the class expression so let's do that let's go to the home page and right click and see the page source so on this page we can see uh, various again attributes and values for many of the tags we're just going to pick one at random so the one I'm just going to pick is the adoption link so if you have a quick look it's got various attributes and it has a value for each attribute and if we have a look it's got an ID so we can just use the ID expression uh, but just to demonstrate how we use the attribute expression for the CSS selector locator I'm just going to use one from here so the one I'm going to pick is this this particular one this href which is a, a hyperlink reference attribute with that value so I'm just going to copy that go back to our test uh, so I'm just going to copy it over here sorry paste it over here okay and I'm just going to append it with the click method and that's it, it's pretty straightforward really uh, so what should happen in our test now is when we run it it should first use the ID expression to find an ID with this value and then click on it it should then use the tag expression to find a tag with the value of P and get the text and print it out to the console so instead of doing this, we could have probably done an insertion, but uh, uh, let's just keep the focus to CSS selectors in this particular video. It will then, being on the contact page, use the class expression and click on the home class value. And we checked, it is only used in one place, which means we would then expect to be on the home page and then for the final expression we would use the attribute expression and we will try and find something on the page that has an attribute of href which equals the value of adoption.html and then it will just close the browser so let's save this test and run it and see what happens so let's run it perfect so that actually happened a lot quicker than I thought it would okay so the first thing it happened was it did indeed uh, go there uh, to the web page it did definitely click on the contact link uh, it did get the text I if we have a look here so this is the text on that particular page it that did go back to the home and it did then uh, navigate to the adoption page so we have now written a test using various different CSS expressions uh, in this case four different expressions and the four most commonly used ones to navigate between pages and we can easily use these expressions to then do further testing say on a on an assertion level and that's it for this video folks if you enjoy my video and find they bring some new knowledge or insight into writing web driver tests then please subscribe and rate if you have any questions or video suggestions, then please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.